Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Dorian and this is my channel where I talk about my investments and how I taught myself how to code and became a software developer. I want to help motivate people who are teaching themselves to code by sharing my story and experience with them. In this video, I'm going to list some helpful tips for people who are learning to code on their own and may be struggling. Some of these things I did and some I wish I would have. With that said, Here's number one, take your time and don't try to learn everything at once. In the beginning, there's so much to learn and you may feel overwhelmed thinking that you need to learn this all at once. As a developer, there's always gonna be things that you don't know and learning new things becomes part of your job. Take it one step at a time and don't be too hard on yourself. Just make sure to keep a curious mind and your expectations low. The beauty of being a self-taught developer is that you can learn at your own pace. So early on when starting out, just make sure to take your time and don't rush things. Number two, focus on the basics. In web development, when you're first starting out, it's easy to get lost in a sea of frameworks and not know where to begin. Early in your learning, make sure to focus on the basics and don't dive in the frameworks right away. Even if your goal is to be a backend developer, you're still going to need to learn some HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So make sure you establish good fundamentals and learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and focus on those three early on. Number three, building stuff will help you learn a lot more than watching videos or doing tutorials. Having your hand held by a tutorial early on is really nice. It's much better to get your hands dirty and start building stuff on your own instead. Don't get stuck doing tutorials for too long. This is something a lot of us do when we're first starting out. I learned with Free Code Camp, and they did a really good job at letting you struggle through the hard parts, but teaching you how to find the answers when you need them. It's a lot like the real day-to-day -day work that a professional developer does. Struggling with your own code problems when you're building your own application is where the real learning happens. Building apps early on is nice because this can give you something to list on your portfolio or resume and also gives you something to talk about during your interviews. Number four, don't jump around between frameworks and languages early on. So this is after you've learned the basics and you want to find a primary programming language to focus on. Stick with one language at first and don't jump around between languages. Early on when I was teaching myself how to code, I didn't have a lot of direction and I jumped around between a lot of different programming languages. I recommend JavaScript. It's widely used, it's fairly easy to learn, and you're probably already familiar with it if you've been focusing on web development. Also, there's a ton of frameworks written in JavaScript and its popularity just keeps growing over the years. Also, when you're ready to learn a framework, pick one and stick with that one for a while. Don't jump around between those either. So a great little tip is a lot of the apps that you write in just plain JavaScript when you first start out, you can convert over to the framework of your choice once you decide to pick one up. Take that first calculator you made and turn it into a React app. Or take that weather widget and make it an Angular component. You may see a lot of job descriptions that have a ton of frameworks and languages listed for the positions that they're looking for. Don't pay any attention to that. Learn the language that you want to learn and the frameworks that you want to learn and the jobs will come. Tip number five, a portfolio is a great first project and you should update it regularly. I recommend you build your first portfolio from scratch and avoid using a template. A portfolio is a great way to put the skills that you've learned on display. My portfolio that I have now all started as just a single HTML file. It was one of the first projects that I completed on Free Code Camp and it has grown with me throughout the years. As I got better, my portfolio got better. And as you get better, your portfolio will get better too. Your portfolio is a way to show off what you're capable of and let people know what you can do. If you're aiming to be a front end developer, you've got to make sure that your portfolio looks good and is mobile responsive. In this day and age, everybody's on a cell phone and they're likely to even pull it up on their cell phone when interviewing you. So be ready for that and make sure that it looks good on all screen resolutions. Tip number six, don't let finding a job be an afterthought. I know there's many people who learn to code because they want to build their own apps or just kind of have fun and challenge themselves with something different. But a lot of us learn to code because we want to get a job in software development. If you're learning to code because you want to improve your life and get a better career, don't let that fall to the wayside. Make sure to have your LinkedIn up to date as well as a GitHub or GitLab account where you can show off your code. Also, a nice portfolio can go a long way. You never know when a job opportunity may present itself, so you don't want to have to scramble around to get everything you need. Make sure to have it ready to go just in case someone asks you for it. Tip number seven, don't compare yourself to other developers, especially seniors. I won't go into imposter syndrome on this video, 
but I will say that a good way to get imposter syndrome is to compare yourself to developers that have been doing this for a very long time. Focus on what you've learned and how much you've progressed and how much you've accomplished. Don't compare yourself to others. It may not seem like it now, but if you do this stuff long enough, you will get good at it. Just remember to always gauge your own progression by your own accomplishments and don't compare yourself to others. A good way to see how much you've progressed is to go back and look at some old code. Check some code that's three or six months old that you wrote and you'll see quickly how much you've learned. So remember, whenever you feel like you're not getting anywhere, everyone starts in the same place. And all those senior developers, they got to where they're at because they stuck with it and have done it for years. And if you stick with it and do it for years, you'll be a senior developer one day too. Number eight, work through your plateau, but beware of burnout. As a self-taught developer, there's gonna be a lot of times when you're gonna feel like you're not learning or making any progress. When a lot of people first discover coding and want to pursue a career in it, they don't really realize how much effort goes into learning and how hard it is to be self-taught. Once the honeymoon phase is over, you're likely to start hitting a few plateaus. It's important that you persevere and push through these whenever they pop up. But remember that burnout is a real thing, so take breaks from time to time. Try to find a balance and aim to stay in the zone when you're learning. And if you don't feel like coding, take a break. Go outside, go for a hike, get some fresh air, play some video games. Get away from the computer from time to time. You don't have to code all the time. Just remember, if you're not enjoying it and you're not having fun as you're learning, you may not stick with it. So go at your own pace, and if you feel like taking a break, take one. Some days you may push through and code for hours straight without taking a break. And some days you may not wanna open your laptop. Make sure you pay attention to those days. Number nine, network with other developers. Make sure to surround yourself with like-minded individuals and learn as much as you can from them. A great way to do this is by going to meetups or networking in different ways. Check out the meetup app. You can check out Discord groups, Reddit, even Twitter has hashtags for learn to code, 100 days of code, and JavaScript 30, where people will look for accountability buddies to help kind of team up and you know hold each other accountable to learn to code together. I still have to push a lot for the actual physical meetups. I know a lot of us are introverts and we don't really like going out too much, but there's a lot of benefit from actually going out and meeting people in person. I've made some great connections at meetups. A lot of my early references that I put on my job applications were from meetups, and I also actually landed my first job because of a meetup where I met a recruiter who was able to find me a position. Remember, you don't have to go at it alone. It's tough enough being a self-taught developer, and it's nice to meet other people that are kind of going through the same struggles that you are. Tip number 10, know your worth and don't be scared to negotiate. So this last tip is a little different and it's more for the self-taught developer when they land their first job offer. I feel as self-taught developers, we need to know this and we need to learn this early on. Many of us self-taught developers, when first coming into this industry, may feel like we don't belong because we don't have a computer science or math degree or traditional education. And many of us self-taught developers may feel like a potential employer is doing us a favor by offering us our first dev job. A lot of us also may be so eager to land that first job that we sell ourselves short. Don't make this mistake and make sure to know your worth. You can also check Glassdoor or Indeed to see what comparable salaries are for your area if the job that you're applying for doesn't have a salary posted. I'm not gonna go into it on this video, but make sure that you learn how to negotiate your salary by watching videos or reading some articles on it before accepting your first job offer. Also, be careful when disclosing previous salaries or being asked what you're looking to make. In some places, they're not really even allowed to ask you what you made, and you don't legally need to tell them. If a potential employer asks you how much you're looking to make, you can respond by asking them how much is the position budgeted for. It's always best to shoot high than low. You can always negotiate down, but it's very hard to negotiate up. Don't be afraid to tell them that you need some time to think about it. This is your first job, and it can really affect how you feel about the industry once you go in. Trust me when I tell you this, you don't need a degree to be a developer, and you can land a job all on your own by being self-taught. So those were my 10 tips for self-taught web developers who are just starting out. If you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, please make sure to like it and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. See you next time and thanks for watching.